السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household, all his companions May Allah bless them and bless every single one of us Ameen My brothers and sisters what do I gain from reading the Quran? That is a very important question. Many people do not read the Quran as much as they should. And sometimes we don't even know what we are meant to be achieving by reading the Quran. The first and foremost point that we need to realize and understand is that it is only by reading the Quran and understanding it that we will actually understand the message of our own maker to us. The only word of our maker in existence today that is not deniable and it is absolutely authentic, it has not been tampered with, confirmed by billions of people through the generations and the years is the Quran. So this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is up to us in the short life of approximately 60 to 70 years to make it our business to learn the Quran, to look into it, and to ensure we try to understand it and to practice upon it and to convey it as best as we can to our offspring and as many others as we can. So point number one, we will understand the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it quite clear why he created us. So I am alive and I am living for a few years. I've seen people die and I've seen people become old. There is a purpose for all this. Why is this happening to me? And why has it happened to all the others? Is in the Quran. I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. And what the meaning of worship me is, is also explained in the Quran. So it is the benefit of reading the Quran by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he make it easy for us. Similarly, by reading the Quran, we achieve an understanding of the role of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the very beginning, when he created the first of humankind, Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he sent messenger after messenger to remind us why we were created and at the same time where we are heading, where we are now and the role and status of all these messengers. And this is why we would understand quite clearly that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the highest of creatures, the highest and most noble of all the messengers. And Allah says very clearly that the messengers are all different in rank. تِلْكَ الرُّسُلُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٍ These messengers, Allah has raised them one above the other in rank. Some of them, Allah spoke to them directly and some, it was not direct, but it was via revelation. So this is all understood if we were to read the Qur'an. But above that, Allah has blessed us in such a way that he tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that by reading a letter of the Quran, even if you have not understood it, you will achieve 10 rewards. So imagine if you understand it, what will you achieve? Subhanallah. Without the understanding, just by me saying, Alif Lam I don't know what that means. To be honest, no one actually knows the precise meaning of that besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the hadith says in that particular verse, Alifun harfun wa lamun harfun wa mimun harfun. Alif is a letter, lam is a letter, mim is a letter. And these three letters, I achieve 30 rewards for uttering them with the intention of reciting the Quran. So imagine what would I achieve if I were to try and understand the rest of the words of the Quran or as much as possible. So this shows us that Allah has blessed us. I achieve a reward by reading the Quran. Also what happens, Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nasu qad ja'atkum maw'idatum min rabbikum. O people, 
A reminder has come from your Lord to you. A reminder, which means by reading the Quran, I will be reminded of my duty unto Allah, the do's and the don'ts. I will continue being reminded. And then Allah says, وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ In it, there is cure for the diseases of the heart. Amazing. So what am I going to achieve by reading the Quran? Cure of the diseases of the heart. Subhanallah. So this is why it's important to recite it melodiously. And the, and the, the Prophet ﷺ has made it quite clear to say, that singing songs and so on, the Quran is not a song. The Quran is not just ordinary speech. It is something that is not poetry, but it is speech that is unique. It is divine. It is to be recited melodiously, as melodiously as possible, in a beautiful voice with clarity. And this is why to study what is known as Tajweed is actually an act of worship. Tajweed is the correct pronunciation and, the, and understanding the qualities of the various letters of the Arabic language and pronouncing them with those qualities from the places that they are to be pronounced. All that is an act of worship because it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I can tell you that to speak English clearly or any other language clearly is something meritorious. It's something good. But I can only tell you an act of worship, the Arabic language, subhanallah. If you are learning it with the correct intention in order to understand how to read the word of your maker, that becomes an ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. No matter how old you are, make an effort to improve on your pronunciation. It will come about with cure of the diseases of the heart. And on top of that, there is cure even for physical ailment. Subhanallah. You know, a person has disease, a person has sickness, a person's eyesight perhaps is weak and so on. Verses of the Quran have within them cure. And this is known from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One might ask, which exact verse? We may not know. And for this reason, try your best to cover the entire Quran. We are Muslimin. If you look carefully at the month of Ramadan, it is known as the month of the Quran. We should be trying to cover the Quran from cover to cover. To complete it from cover to cover at least once in the month of Ramadan because it's the month of the Quran if you take a look at the previous scriptures and the way the people treat those scriptures they do not complete it cover to cover they only have you know selected readings chosen readings for specific cases and instances and so on so the bulk of them if not almost all of them would not have covered the scripture from one point to the other from the beginning to the end but if you ask the Muslimin I think it's the other way around. The bulk would have completed it at least once, if not <coughs> once a year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I encourage you from this pulpit, my brothers and sisters, to take a marker, put it in the Quran, and even if you are to read slowly, two lines a day, put a marker, that is Allah. That's your link with Allah. That is the cure for the diseases of the heart that I may have or you may have. It's the cure of other diseases. Because as I complete the Quran, I will have covered verses that would be verses wherein I will achieve cure from a disease that I may not even know that I'm suffering from. Subhanallah. So this is why take a Quran, a Mus'haf as we call it. You know, the, the book that the Quran is written in. And what we need to do is we take a little marker, place it there and follow up. Every day we read a page, two pages. Obviously, if you're a hafid of the Quran, you have no excuse. You need to read much more. But we're talking of those who are struggling. I've met some people slightly elderly. They say, I've never learned how to read the Quran. My brother, my sister, it is not too late. Attempt to learn it. Even if you can read a few words, subhanallah. That will be your link with your maker. Imagine you are giving so much of importance to the words of the one who made you and you are going to return to him very soon. And this is why Allah says through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises through the Quran certain people and he drops through the same Quran certain people. Those who try to learn, those who try to put into practice, those who try their best developing the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, the Quran will come hujjatun laka aw alayk. The hadith says the Quran comes to bear witness on the day of judgment for you or against you. Those who make the effort, it will be for them. May Allah make us from amongst those whom the Quran bears witness for and not against. 
But the same hadith continues to say that those who have not made the effort will be dropped down by the Quran. Either we knew how to read it, we did not put it into practice, or we did not make an effort or attempt to try and learn how to read it, then too we are guilty. Because it's the most important word in existence. I need to make an effort no matter how old I am. Age is not an excuse, my brothers and sisters. It is the seriousness, the intention, the link with your maker, the fact that you appreciate the status of his word. So reading the Quran will bring about something great and that is entry into Jannah. The Quran can come and bear witness for you on the day of Qiyamah and that itself can grant you and myself entry into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. One wouldn't want to be from the others whom the Quran comes forth to bear witness against. This person did not make an attempt to learn. This person did not attempt to put into practice. Sometimes we know the Quran, we have learned off by heart so much, we've known the meaning as well, but we do not put it into practice. If that's the case, then too, there is a warning by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and even verses of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the complaint of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا When Muhammad sallallahu complained about the wrong treatment that his people had given the Qur'an, the kuffar of Quraysh used to laugh when the Qur'an was being recited. They used to scoff at it, block their ears. Some people, this is a warning for them to say, do not take this Qur'an as a mockery. Mockery meaning, you know what it means, you know its strength, you know where it comes from, but you've made no effort to try and learn it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to learn it and put it into practice. Also, this beautiful Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it the dhikr. You know the word dhikr, we hear it a lot. Some people think it only means to say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that is dhikr. That is a part of the dhikr, without a doubt, to praise Allah is a part of the dhikr. But were you ever aware of the fact that afdalu dhikri tilawatul Qur'an? The best of all dhikr is the recitation of the Qur'an. It's the word of Allah. So the best thing I could do if I want to engage in dhikr, the word dhikr, is to actually read the Qur'an. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in the Qur'an, where He says, and this is an amazing verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the disbelievers. And He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالذِّكْرِ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ لَا يَأْتِيهِ الْبَاطِلُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَلَا مِنْ خَلْفِهِ تَنْزِيلٌ مِنْ حَكِيمٍ حَمِيدٍ This is referring to the Qur'an where Allah says the disbelievers who disbelieved or those who disbelieved in the dhikr. The word used is the dhikr referring to the Qur'an. Those who disbelieved in the Qur'an when it came to them yet, it is the mighty book, it is the powerful book, Al-Kitab, Al-Aziz, the book full of might. Amazing, look at Allah describing it. The mighty book, you want power, you want strength, well read the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an. You will have spiritual energy and power religious energy as well as physical strength it will be granted to you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will feel good and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who have disbelieved in this dhikr yet it is the book the mighty book Allah says falsehood and evil and tampering cannot reach it neither from the front nor from the back it is indeed revelation from the all wise the full of praise that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness. And this is why my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to keep praising Allah through the recitation of the Quran. Have you ever thought of something? Whenever we stand up for salah, it is compulsory for us within salah to read the Quran. It shows us already how important the Quran is. So if I am to read the Quran, I will be able to fulfill my salah correctly. So a Muslim should be reading passages of the Quran five times a day in every unit or rak'ah of his or her prayer. And this shows you that Allah wants you to take pride in his word, to understand it, to read it correctly, to repeat it constantly. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها مثاني الله says Allah has revealed the best of speech the best of speech أحسن الحديث what is it it is the book the Quran متشابها it has verses in it that are similar Mathani means repeated often. So it would include repetition of the same verses again and again. Because, for example, if you were to go to school and the mathematics teacher taught you that one plus one is two, for example, the next day when you came and she told you or he told you again that one plus one is two and the following day one plus one is two, you will never ever forget it. I've told you something simple, but even if it is a difficult concept, if you are made to listen to it on a daily basis, you will know it, you will understand it. Same applies to the Quran. If you listen to a portion every single day and you are reminded of the same thing every day, it becomes your nature, as they say. And it becomes something you are aware of because you've repeated it. And for this reason, the instruction of Salah in the Quran does not just appear once. It appears so many times. It was enough for Allah to just say it once and that's it. But he repeats it in different ways, sometimes with a warning, sometimes with glad tidings, sometimes with both, sometimes with neither. And this is something from Allah. He knows why he does this. It's unique. Also, if you are to read the Quran and understand it, scientific secrets of existence will be made manifest to you. Made manifest to you. You know the previous verse that I just read before I get into the next point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how if you read the Quran with belief, Subhanallah, with belief. And you need to have belief because there are others who read the Quran in order to find fault in it. It increases them in their intention. You know, the Quran is a unique book. With whatever intention you read it, it increases you with that or within that. So for example, a person who reads it for goodness, he gets goodness. A person who reads it for clarification, he gets clarification. A person who reads it in order to find fault, he becomes deeper and deeper in his loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So Allah says, تَقْشَعِرُّ مِنْهُ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ The skin of those who are fearful of the, their Rabb, when they hear the recitation of the Qur'an or they listen to the Qur'an, and it would also include recitation of the Qur'an. What happens to the skin? The skin is unique. It's amazing. It becomes crumpled. You actually get goosebumps as it were. And then the skin softens up. So after it tightens, it softens up and leans towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then comes the beautiful verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Quran. And he says, amazingly, that he will show us the signs. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى he says, I will continue showing them the signs in the horizons, meaning in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and within themselves until it is proven to them beyond doubt that the Quran is the truth. Amazing. This is speaking of scientific discoveries where as time passes, more and more discoveries confirming what the Quran has brought 1400 years back. Amazing. So this is why you have discoveries of the sun and the moon and the child and the embryo and so many other scientific discoveries. At a certain point, people might say, oh, this is contradictory to the Quran. But you find a few years down the line or a few decades down the line, they come up with new findings. You see, science is based on research. And research, depending on who has researched and what they've had to research, keeps on changing its conclusions based on what has happened. Until it comes to the concrete conclusion, which is always in accordance with revelation. Amazing. This is what Allah is saying. And this is why at one stage, there was a conclusion that the sun does not move. A long, long time back, that's what they used to say. And some people said, oh, that means the Quran is wrong. Astaghfirullah. The Quran was never wrong. Later on, science discovered or those specialized discovered that no, it does move, but it doesn't move as much as the other, for example, the other planets in the orbit and whatever. So amazingly, the Quran did not make mention of how much it moves. It only says it moves and that was it. So this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things you will benefit from is as you recite the verses of the Quran, trying to understand them, 
there will be discoveries there will be so much and even in terms of that which people have not yet discovered the quran has in it prophecies of what is going to happen you will achieve an understanding of it today people are crying why is this happening that happening have you ever read the quran the answers are there have that same quran will lead you to the sunnah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this would block out those or it would negate go against those who say that i only believe in the quran and that's it there's nothing else besides the quran whatever's in the quran is enough for me we need to pause for a moment and we need to explain that if you follow the quran alone automatically it leads you to following muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly makes mention of it in so many places that you follow the messenger wama ataakum ar-rasul fakhudhu wama nahaakum anhu fantahu whatever muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has instructed you you take it as instruction and whatever he has prohibited you from consider it a prohibition that's directly leading you to the sunnah فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Nay, they are not considered true believers until they take your judgment in their disputes as final. Which means whatever he has said, however he has judged, whatever he has uttered is final. It is something that will apply in my life up to the end and yours and anyone who calls themselves Muslim. So this is what you will achieve or oh, this is only part of what you will achieve by reading and understanding the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may he grant us a good understanding. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.